that you've heard my prayer. I just want to thank And I just want to thank you, oh the Lord, thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but listen to me. If I had a thousand years to live, has he been good to you? Man, I got caught backwards here. I'm not even ready to go. Give me a minute here to get, get. I don't even see my tie out there in Facebook land, but I've got your Grinch on again today. And uh, man, oh man, good to have you out this morning. Appreciate everybody being here. Everybody doing all right? Man, it's been another beautiful week here in South Central Florida. A little cool front's coming. Might be good for you know what, fishing. Anyhow, we're glad to have everybody out. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, y'all got your row packed right there. Man, I like that. I like that. Got the kids back there. Well, here we are just a couple weeks from Christmas, two weeks today. And, uh, man, we just want to say we're so glad to have you out. Thank you for joining us this morning here live and in person and also on Facebook. Good to have Pat and Pam with us this morning. Appreciate you ladies being here. May God bless you. I, I already like them because I've been joking with them. Yeah. Now, now, I hope they didn't get mad, but uh, I, I like to joke and carry on. But I told them to enjoy it because it'll get rough after a while. But uh, good to, it's good to have you ladies. We appreciate y'all being here. And, uh, you know, that's the work of the lake ministry right there, isn't it? We, we call that the lake ministry. Big D and Donald out on the lake catching people to bring them to church. And um, I like that. I like that. So God bless you. But Wow, we got a lot going on over the next couple of weeks, and uh, we just uh, hope and pray that uh, I know you've got a lot going on. It's going to be very busy. Remember, we want to have a what kind of Christmas? Mary. M-A-R-Y, not M-E-R-R-Y. Well, you know what? If you have an M-A-R-Y Christmas, you'll have an M-E-R-R-Y Christmas. Amen. If you have a Martha Christmas... You won't have a M-E-R-R. -R Maybe I'll just preach on that this morning. But that's yeah, good to have you out. We're going to get started up real fast and do the pledges. And then we're going to get the kids up. We're going to change the order a little bit because they got to go across and practice. Because next week is their big day. And, uh, man, we want them to get all the time they can get in. All right, Brother Bill. Green. To our American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the Christian flag, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior whose kingdom it stands, 
one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. To our Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and I will hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Right. Youngins, come on up. You can be seated. Come on up, guys. We're going to do this moment with Mike. Everybody gather around. How's everybody doing today? Huh? You doing all right, buddy? Yeah. My main man here. Everybody doing all right? Wow. wow. Ooh, man, love those huggins. Mm, man, oh, man. Wow. Well, you scared me. I thought you were coming around to give me a hug. I thought, Jonathan, going to give me a hug? Yeah, here you go. Woo! Woo! Man. Good to have everybody out. Good to see where have I been? Have I been gone? Nico, my man. Anybody remember this from last week? Huh? Can you see my tie? Anybody see my tie? Well, you know, that's the Grinch on there, right? How many people went to Christmas parade last night? Anybody get to go? Yeah. No, you were in it. You were in it? Somebody told me they had a lot of Grinches there. Is that true? Yeah. You see the Grinch? Yeah. Well, remember, remember what we said last year? I read about the start of the Grinch. And what was his problem? How did it start? What was his problem? He had a heart problem. What was it? His heart was too small. His heart was too small. And that's the way most people are. They've got heart problems. Their heart's two sizes too small. I wanted to finish, kindly finish up today. Can I read to you a little bit more today? <clears throat> Let me get my... You, you weren't here last week? Okay, I'm going to start right here. Let me get my Grinch voice in. See if I can get it. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising above the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. Sounds like a sermon, doesn't it? But the sound wasn't sad. Why? This sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He, start, he stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came somehow or other. It came just the same. What did the Grinch do? Does anybody remember? What did he do? He stole, he tried to steal Christmas exactly. He took the trees, the presents. Listen to what he says that he, as he stood there. And the Grinch with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was so sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, didn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. Is there a story in that? Is there a moral to that? What's that trying to tell us? Christmas is not just about, what is it, Nico? Christmas is not just about presents. It's about spending time with family. That's a good point. Everybody likes presents, so don't I like presents myself. You're right. There's a key point. What's the key point we're missing? Jesus is the reason for the season, right? If you take Christ out of Christmas, do you have Christmas? No. no. So the Grinch found out something that a lot of people don't know. Christmas is about Christ. It's not about boxes and bows and presents and gifts, although those are nice. 
It's really about Jesus Christ. Amen? Will you guys go practice? Wait a minute before you go. What did I ask you to do last week? I said, do something for me. Give me something for Christmas. What was it? Nico? Make sure you invite your parents and your family to come next week and see the play, see the program. All right? We're excited about it. You going to be here? I'm going to try and come myself. All right. Guys, have a great day. We love you. We'll give the kids a couple of minutes to get on outside. But uh, in the meantime, I want to remind you that uh, Tuesday morning after Bible study, we're going to be here taking care of some things, and we need you to come. Um, bring a pair of scissors, an ink pen, and any extra wrapping paper or anything like that that you might have. Okay? Let's all stand, and uh, we're going to sing, Oh, Come All You Faithful. there on that end man I love those times with the kids don't you and um, we may want to just keep that all year I, I love that and I almost preached from there Wednesday night man and if I keep on like I'm going I may have to I may have to do that let me give you a couple of announcements don't forget as Miss Jean said Tuesday morning truths at 10 o'clock we'll be on I don't know what less than one three or four number four I believe on spiritual gifts and I uh, hope you'll come out and then I hope you'll come out and help wrap gifts I'm not a gift wrapper I mean I used to wrap Kathy's stuff and it looked like something come like the hogs would have dr drugged that thing in man you know I just wrap it any that's why they make gift bags and gift boxes so come out Tuesday if you can and be a part of that don't forget tonight church tonight six o'clock and uh, hopefully we'll be continuing on our Christmas themes tonight church dinner Next Friday, this coming Friday at 6 o'clock. We want to be sure and remember that. If you've not got your name on the list, be sure and put it on. We'd be glad to have you. We've got a good list of people that have signed up already. Then the children's program will be next Sunday morning. And then 
Christmas Eve communion will be on the 24th. Amen? Well, we're going to get ready to go to prayer this morning. I hope you'll pray. We certainly need to pray for our country. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, man, we're in a mess if ever was. And uh, good to have Justin and Katie with us this morning back there. They're visiting from Texas. And I told them we wouldn't even hold that against them. So God bless you all. Thank you for being here. Down here in the southern part of Florida. You know, this is the free state of Florida. I don't know if you know that or not. But uh, we take pride in that. Amen? And uh, in fact, I was talking about praying for our country. And pr- I had people coming in. I won't point them out to talking about our president. I said, well, he's your president too. And they didn't like it. They got upset about it and got mad and left. No, they didn't leave. But uh, I told them, I said, we're supposed to pray for a president and our leaders. And I gave them a Bible verse. I said, here's what you pray. Pray this every day. Psalms 109, verse number 8. Psalms 109, verse number 8. Let his days be few and let another take his office. I mean, let his days be few and let another take his office. Amen? Amen. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get started up this morning and get started right off the bat, but uh, I'm a little disappointed with our administration trading a merchant of death who what our own government officials calls the most wanted man, the most dangerous man in the world, an arms dealer. Yet our administration wants to take our arms, but we want to release somebody else that is an arms dealer back to Russia. Well, I'm not really too upset that Brittany got to come home. I'm glad she got to come home. But I am upset that we left a Marine over there and a school teacher. There's something wrong with that. Now, I don't know about you, and you probably haven't heard this, and I don't know if it's truth or not, but it, I think it is. There's a guy that I listen to and follow that they've gotten reports coming out of Russia that they were offered who they wanted to release. I'm not shocked at that, are you? Because she's a woman, she's black, she's lesbian, she's a ball player, which we want to pick her over top of the Marine, leave the Marine over there. I don't like that. I'm, Huh? And she, well, and not only that, she hates America. She hates America. And I don't like that. So, you know, we need to pray. That, if, 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 listen, if we're going to give somebody away like the merchant of death, obviously this guy, doesn't, our leader, doesn't know anything about the art of the deal. You don't, trade, you don't trade the merchant of death for that. You get everything you want if you're going to trade. Amen. Amen. And I'm just a little bit disappointed. So pray for our country this morning. That's a prelude to the sermon. And uh, pray for the Ukraine. As it, man, I keep following uh, uh, Nina and watching what's going on over there. They had a day of rest, I think she said yesterday, with no emergency signals going off in the Ukraine. And boy, it's, that, has to be, that has to be a blessing. So pray for those people over there. Uh, pray for the hurricane victims. I was still reading. Somebody posted uh, just this week. I was reading, you know. Again, our life is going on as normal. People over on the coast are still, they're not in their homes. They don't have anything. It's, it's going to be a tough Christmas for a lot of people. And people are going to have to find out that Christmas really doesn't come in boxes and bows. That it is more than just what you get out of a store. So pray, pray for the hurricane victims. Pray for Carolyn. Richard was just telling me Carolyn broke her hip and, and got some problems and we want to be sure and pray for Carolyn. We need to get her on her. It's all right. We put on her prayer list. And, uh, man, we want to pray for Miss Carolyn and, and tell her we miss her and we love her. And then also pray for Carla's grandmother. We've been going on and on now for weeks. She's turning 100 on December the 23rd. Uh, they called this morning. She's in intensive care with sepsis and pneumonia. And several, they don't think she's going to make it. Got organ failure. They don't think she's going to make it. So Carla's mom and dad are getting ready to leave and, and head, <coughs> head to Arizona. And then uh, the major and Carla, they'll be going there when they've still got their plans to go. But pray for them. Pray for Linda Robertson, one of our teachers that we used to work with, had cancer surgery this week and had knee replacement. So pray for her. She's been in intensive care, was supposed to have gotten out, but pray for Miss Linda. Pray for Bill and Marge Floyd with their health issues, and they're going to be going out of town. <clears throat> Alan has been having some more health issues, so pray for him. Tammy Wilson's 19-year-old niece was taken off of life support 
That's a blessing, and, and it seems to be making it was damaged her heart and lungs. John Hager had cancer surgery in his home recovering. Nancy Whit has health issues. Donna Tackett, one of our online members up in West Virginia, is really struggling with health issues. Rodney Sears, Melva's son-in-law, uh, just a young man is in the hospital with a stroke. <clears throat> Rosemary and Don Taylor, Rosemary started her cancer treatments. They certainly need prayer. Kyle Jenkins, that's a major and Carla's neighbor's uh, relation down there. He's got cancer of the eye and surgery was Friday. Janae said her mom and stepdad needs prayers. And Brenda Pogue is having a cancer surgery on Friday. So can I say again this morning, we've got an exhaustive list on our Facebook page and on our website. Miss Kath Ms. Kathy sends that out every Tuesday morning. And man, if your name's not on the list, you ought to just praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you what, we got something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. So uh, we're going to pray this morning and get ready to get started up. And again, it's so good to see everybody out and just thank you for being here. How you doing, girl? Good. good to look, that, look at that baby back there. <laughs> She's growing up, isn't she? Good to see you, girl. That was our, that was, was that like our first baby yes. here in the church? So, uh, wow, good to see y'all this morning. All right, let's pray, can we? Well, Lord, we're so thankful this morning to be able to come into your house and to be here, and we have a place that's comfortable, a place where uh, nobody's standing at the doors with a gun to keep us out. No bombs are dropping, no air raid sirens are going off, and we've got food in our bellies, and clothes on our back and vehicles to drive and Lord how blessed we are and Lord our names are not on the prayer list this morning and Lord I pray that you bless everybody that's here today Lord you know what they need you know uh, the hearts and the desires and the needs of every individual and Lord I pray through by your goodness and your grace and your mercy today that you will take whatever said today Lord and dish it out and minister it out Lord that it might be a blessing to those that are here today. Lord, I pray for those that are on Facebook watching this morning, Lord, that you'll bless them and help them. There's so many problems and so many needs. And Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you help today. Lord, I pray there's somebody either with us or online that's not saved and they don't know Jesus. Lord, that they might realize and be like the Grinch and realize that Christmas is not about all this other stuff. It's about Jesus Christ. And Lord, that they might get Jesus in their heart and be saved before it's everlasting too late. Lord, bless all these names that have been called out, all these situations, and Lord, we just ask that you would bless and help today. Bless our service in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before Miss Jean comes and sing, I want to make an announcement about our online people and, and to you here. I just want, you know, sometimes, you ever get discouraged or down in the dumps? Do you ever, well, I wasn't down in the dumps or discouraged, but I got to looking around. And I just want to thank God, and I hope you take this. I'm thanking God, thanking you and the people online. I was looking, our podcast, daily podcast, have now, it's now been downloaded over 43,000 times. Amen. Man, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, that's amazing. We're trying to promote the YouTube channel, and it's been hit now over 3,000 times. That's sermons. Our Facebook program today live is number 599. Can you believe that? That's in about two years and, and seven or eight months. I'm going to say again, if you have been on Facebook live and following that, you've gotten more sermons in the last two years than most people get in years and years and years. And that reaches, that reaches thousands of people a week. So the gospel's going out. I was thinking this morning, God, you've been so good to us. Amen. We're a little group of people. Amen. And because of you and your vision and your dedication and your sharing, and I've got people today, I sent a thank, thank you message to somebody today that sponsors the podcast and pays for that out of their own pocket every month. And I said, thank you. This is what's happening with the podcast. I forget how many different countries that's gone to. And I say, thank God for that. Amen. All we're trying to, what are we trying to do to keep the main thing, the main thing, and that's tell people about Jesus. So thank you, thank you for those that are online, those that share, those that support that, and I say, my God bless you, man. That warmed my heart this morning, Miss Jean, so come on and sing this morning. 
I see you're going to sing one of my favorites. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way into the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Give us a light to light. The way unto the place with perfect day, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope for rest. For the redeemed, the good, the blessed, yonder in glory when the crown is won. For Jesus is now that star divine, brighter and brighter he will shine, beautiful star. Thank you, Miss Jean. I love that. I like what Pastor Brooks said online the other night when the, the major did the program Friday night, the TGIFNS program Friday night. Did a great job, and I appreciate that. But I, Pastor Brooks says some of the best gospel songs have been written about the birth of Jesus Christ, and I believe that. And uh, Oh Holy Night, man, he played Oh Holy Night Friday night on there. Son, I'm going to tell you, I about come unglued. And, uh, man, I just love that. And not only that, I think some of the greatest sermons are about the birth of Jesus. Amen. Now, I've got preacher friends and people I know, they don't preach on occasion on holidays or special events or stuff in the news. And I say, God bless you. That's all right. I'll make up for it. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I like preaching on the birth of Jesus. And, uh, man, I tell you what, I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad the Lord's here. Amen. Amen. And I need you to get with me this morning. Can you get with me? Nod your head. Can you get with me? You're going to have to get with me and help me this morning. If you help me, I'll finish up faster. Now, if you don't help me, it's going to be a long, drawn-out process. And the best thing, you know, I used to tell them in, in education, tell them in, in sermons sometimes. My job is to teach or preach, and your job is to listen. If you finish before I do, let me know, and we'll both quit together. But... Uh, Gene was talking about buying the Christmas gifts. I appreciate Gene and Angie and, and uh, Miss Joanne back there that, that taking that task on. Wow. And she said they had Nerf guns on sale the other day at, uh, at Walmart. I said, when do you buy me one? I said, I'd love to have one. I'd like to shoot people while I'm preaching. People that nod off 
and sleep during church. I like to just shoot them with a Nerf gun and uh, shake them a little bit, man. Just scare the living bejeebies out of them. Amen? But uh, again, we appreciate you being here, and I love Christmas. Good to have the baby with us, Aria, this morning, man. Is she, where's she back in the back? I was looking at her. What a beautiful guy. Another little baby. So we got babies. I like that. Nothing like babies and kids in a church. Amen? Amen. Us old graybacks are going to be dying off soon, and, and uh, maybe not today, but soon. And uh, maybe we can make it to a new year. I don't know, but uh, we appreciate all these young ones. Can we pray this? I just feel like I want to pray this morning. Will you pray? Do me a favor. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to get you involved. Will you pray while I pray and ask God to speak to your heart? And ask God to touch you this morning. And if you say, I don't want touch, we'll pray that he'll touch me. Amen. Amen. Would you do that this morning while I pray? Well, Lord, we're thankful today to be able to be here and, Lord, be able to share thy word. What a blessing and privilege it is, but an awesome responsibility. And, oh, God, I thank you already for the kids that are here, these babies that are here, the people that are here, our visitors that are here, those that are on Facebook and, and watching, Lord, on live. Lord, I thank you for them. But, Lord, I'm thankful most of all that the sweet Holy Spirit of God is here with us and that you're here. And, God, I pray right now, Lord, that you'll do a work in my heart. I need you today. And, God, I pray that you'll come down and manifest yourself in a great way this morning that people will be stirred up. They'll be excited. They'll be saved. They'll be renewed and rededicated, Lord, and on fire for you today. And, Lord, I pray that whatever said or done will be done to give praise and glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Did, did you pray? Yes. Raise your hand up. Did you pray or just sit there like a knot on a log? All right. Luke chapter number 1. Luke chapter number 1. I preached last week on this thought. Look at that title. I preached last week on this thought, Is the Virgin Birth Really Necessary? I've had seven podcasts in a row on the Virgin Birth. I'm going to have a break this week, and on the 16th I'm going back to the Virgin Birth again. You say, Pastor, why are you harping so much and talking so much about the virgin birth? I'm going to tell you why, because it's that important. It's that important, the virgin birth of Jesus. You say, well, I don't believe it will hang on because you're the person I'm going to be preaching to this morning. Luke chapter number 1, listen to what it says in verse number 26. Luke 1 verse 26. And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a, thank you, virgin. Say it again, virgin. If your virgin doesn't say virgin, get another version, amen? amen. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. I tell you what, I think the birth of Jesus is one of the most fabulous, miraculous, greatest events that's ever happened in the history of the universe. In fact, I only know one thing that has superseded that, and that would be the crucifixion and the resurrection. But I got to tell you this morning, if there hadn't been a miraculous virgin birth, there would be no need for a crucifixion. There'd be no need to put somebody, just a human man, on the cross because a human being could not die for the sins of the world. It took the Son of God to die on the cross at Calvary. And then it took the Son of God to be able to raise up from the dead on the third day. I like Christmas. Amen? Amen. I'm glad that people know what Christmas is all about. I don't know if you know it or not this morning, but there is a war against Christmas. You know that? You know there's people that are more like the Grinch than they are like Jesus? You know there are people more like Scrooge than they are like Jesus? Do you know that there are more people like King Herod who wanted to kill Jesus and wanted to do away with Christmas and they don't like Christmas? Listen, and i got to tell you something this morning. It's not a war against Santa Claus. It's not a war against the Grinch. It's not a war against Frosty. It's not a war against Rudolph. It's not a war against the tree. It's not a war against the lights. It's not a war against the garland. It's a war against Jesus himself. That's what they don't like. They don't care to celebrate Christmas. 
You know, give me something to drink, give me something to eat, and give me gifts, and give me a day off work, and we'll celebrate it. But when you put Christ in Christmas, then people get upset about it. Amen? I mean, think about that. It's not about the presents or the boxes or the bows. It's not about the holiday. It's about the holy day of Christmas. There's a war going on against Jesus, the Son of God. And Satan continues to spread his lies and deceptions on us at an alarming rate. I just think about what Satan has done. He's upped his game as we near the end of time, the rapture of the church. You know the next event on God's prophetic time clock is what? Say it with me, the rapture of the church. That means, listen, 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 I know Joe Biden and Hillary have given a whole new definition to what it means to be left behind. But there is a biblical definition of being left behind. And if you're not saved and you're on your way to heaven, when the rapture comes, you're going to be left behind to face Satan and his antichrist. I honestly believe that we in America are under satanic deception. Something's wrong in America. Would you, be, would you agree with that? Something's happened in America. And I'm just going to say it. This is not the America that I grew up in. Most of us in here have got some age on us. And I'm going to tell you what, if you can remember back to when you were a child and you grew up, this is not the America that we grew up in. You say, what's happened? Well, I think we've got satanic deception. I think Satan knows that his time is short. Satan doesn't want to go to hell alone. He wants to get everybody he can to go with him. Yeah. And by the way, he's doing a pretty good job. Can I tell you that you can't kill Christmas? People say, well, I'm going to kill Christmas. Herod said, I'm going to kill Christ. Well, I got good news for you. Satan had tried for 4,000 years from the very beginning in Genesis chapter 3. Go back and read it. Genesis 3 verse 15. When Adam and Eve sinned and God came down and asked Adam and said, Adam, why did you do this? And he said, the woman. Best excuse in the world. The woman that you gave me. She did it. God went to the woman. He said, what about it? And the woman said, she's like, she like old Flip Wilson. The devil made me do it. She said, it was Satan. God went to Satan and said, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Because of this, you're going to crawl on your belly and eat dust the rest of your days. But I want to tell you that there's going to come forth the seed from the woman. And that seed is going to grow up. And you might bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. That was the first messianic prophecy of the coming of the Lord Jesus. And for 4,000 years, Satan did everything he could to destroy that. He knew that he was coming through the Jewish nation. It had been prophesied. It had been talked about. The Bible says salvation is of the Jews. Why? Because Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah. He did everything in the world to stop the bloodline, to cut it off, to kill the seed out. And you know what? Everything that happened could not stop Jesus because God is sovereign. And God is supreme and God's in charge. Amen? When he was born in Bethlehem on that night 2,000 years ago, and the wise men finally got there, and they went to King Herod. King Herod wasn't even looking for him. The religious leaders knew nothing about it. And by the way, let me bust another Christmas tradition. They didn't get there until about 18 months or 24 months after the birth of Jesus. They weren't there on the night Jesus was born. Was born. They showed up months later down the road, and still nobody knew anything about it. They weren't looking. They, weren't, they, they didn't care. And when Herod found out about it, Herod was such a, a wicked ruler. He said, I'll kill all the babies two years old and under. And God in his sovereignty appeared to Joseph and take that baby and get out of here and get down to Egypt yeah. and escape. And got him down there until Herod and his people had died off. He's tried for 2,000 years to discredit Jesus. He's tried for 6,000 years, 4,000 Old Testament, 2,000 New Testament, and he has not been able to stop Jesus. Can I tell you something tonight? Today, he can't kill Christmas. 
He's got his ministers out there that do not believe in the virgin birth. He's got his people out there that deny the virgin birth. He's got churches out there that are voting and taking decisions and making a, a decision that we don't believe the Bible is the, the word of God, that we don't believe in the virgin birth, that we don't believe in the resurrection, that we don't believe in the second coming, that we don't believe in the rapture. But I want to tell you that God is still alive and well. And he's coming back. And I don't know if you know it or not, but I'm going to tell you what I've done. Maybe what you ought to do today, you'll go home and read Revelation, chapter number 19. Because when the smoke settles and the dust clears, I'm going to tell you who's going to be standing there, and it's going to be Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he's got on his thigh and on his vesture a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And the Bible said, God said, that it hath pleased God that he has given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. I'm going to tell you what Satan can't do it, amen? That's good news for us that believe, amen? You know why? Because Christ is Christmas. But you know how people are trying to destroy Christmas today? I'll tell you where it starts. It starts with the virgin birth. That's why it start, where it starts. We've got the liberals. We've got the modernists. We've got preachers, we've got denominations, we've got churches that do not believe the virgin birth. They deny it. But you're looking at an old-time, old-fashioned, heaven sin, Holy Ghost, call of God, old-time Christian that still believes that the virgin birth is real and it's true. And as long as they want to deny it, I want to stand and proclaim and declare that Jesus Christ is the virgin-born Son of God. You say, I don't believe it. I don't care what you believe. Give a hoot what you believe. I've got a Bible that tells me what's true, amen? I want to, I want to be a voice. I hope this morning that you would pray and say, God, help me to be a voice. Help me to be someone to have the courage to stand. I'm afraid to stand. I'm afraid of what the government will do. I'm afraid what Facebook will do. I'm afraid what this woke movement will do. I'm afraid they'll come. Listen, you've got the power of God if you're saved on you. Amen. You have to worry about everything else. I want to shout it loud and proud. We got these people that have those rainbow parades. You know what I'm talking about? Punch them on the side and tell them the alphabet people. That's what we call them here, the alphabet people. Got every letter in the rainbow just about. And the alphabet and the rainbow. They've, taken, they've hijacked everything biblical. They've taken the thing that was a covenant to God, from God to man, that he'd not destroy the earth with water again. They've taken it and hijacked it. And they want to just go on. I want to, they, and they shout it loud and proud. Well, I'm, glad, I'm happy to be gay. They'll shout it loud. I tell you what I'm happy to be. I'm happy to be an old-time, old-fashioned Christian. Amen. We promote old-time, fundamental Christian. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ. It's the cornerstone of Christianity. It's the bedrock of Christianity. It's the fundamentals to Christianity. It's unique to Christianity. It is Christianity. Without the virgin birth, you do not have Christianity. Amen. You know what I say this morning? I say, well, I'll announce it. That's why I keep preaching on it. That's why I keep doing podcasts on it day after day, year after year, preaching on the virgin birth. We need to announce it. We need to believe it. We need to consecrate it. It's holy. Amen. We need to declare it. We need to envision it. Man, listen, of what happened on that day. We need to forever hold it dear. We need to uphold it. We need to proclaim it. We need to stand up for it. And I pray in this day and age of modernism and liberalism that you'll stand up and enlist in the fight to stand for Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of giving ground away to Satan. I, I mean, how much longer? Let me ask you a question. How much longer can we be silent? I mean, Satan has come in and kicked the door open and taken everything that we've held dear, everything that America was founded upon, and have just, he's just, he's, he has pulled it out in the streets and stomped on it. And you know what we've done? We're like the silent majority. Well, I, I don't want to say anything. I think about these little babies here come in this morning. All those kids over there. I'm going to just tell you something in case you don't know it. I'm not going to live much longer. Somebody's going to have to come along behind us with the same convictions, with the same gumption, with the same grit, with the same fortitude, with the same voice that looks liberalism and modernism and wokeism and all this foolishness in the eyes and say, I don't believe it. 
I still believe in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Well, you say, I don't know what we can do, preacher. I tell you what we can do. We can stand up for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Don't you think it's time that you get involved in the battle? You were saved to be in the battle. Right. Look at the shirt Jamie's got on this morning. You show that to the major? Jamie's got his shirt on there, the armor of God, right there. That's, hey, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in that evil day and having done all to withstand. Stand therefore, Amen. having on the armor of God. I like that shirt, Jamie. I like it. I asked him where he got it, but I like it. What size is that, by the way? <laughs> I'll trade you here maybe when church is over. I like it. I like it, man. When you think about that, man, listen. I want to look at today some testimonies about the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. A testimony is a powerful thing. Amen. We all have one. Amen. Amen. There's power in a personal testimony. If you're saved, you've got a testimony. It may not be a good one. It may be a bad one. You know, a testimony can be spoken or it can be unspoken by the things you do and the places you go and what you say and where you hang out is an unspoken testimony. I think it's good when you grab your Bible and head to church on Sunday morning. I think that way the neighbors say, listen, go out the door with your Bible in your hand. They don't have to wonder where he's going. So they're going to church. It's an unspoken testimony. There's power in a personal testimony. Paul was saved on the road to Damascus and everywhere he went. No matter who he stood before, kings or paupers or anybody he stood before, the religious leaders, Paul always took them back to what happened on the road to Damascus when he got saved. Man, it's important that we use our testimony for Jesus Christ. Jesus said that we're to be salt and light. We need to shake and shine. The salt in the salt shaker is not any good. A flashlight that doesn't shine is not worth two cents. How many of you got flashlights that won't work? I picked up a couple the other day and told them, okay, we need to do something with this. Got one right on my nightstand. I picked it up and clicked it on. Guess what it did? Nothing, like a lot of Christians. I said, we got to fix that. What good to have a flashlight on your nightstand if the batteries are dead in it? Well, some of you got a dead battery. Hey, man, you need a recharge. Man, you need to get charged up. You need to let your light shine for Jesus because I'm going to tell you what, we can't let modernism and liberalism and wokeism change the culture around us and they're destroying everything that we hold dear. You say, well, I don't want to be different. Well, it's the difference that makes the difference. You say, I want to look like everybody else. Then you, listen, you need to question your salvation. Amen? Man, it's the difference that makes the difference. I don't know anything that uh, uh, can be a poor testimony for Jesus than it when your lips and your hips don't match each other. People say, well, you know, I say I'm a Christian, but when your hips are taking you somewhere else and you're not doing what the Bible says, then that's a very poor testimony. Yes. Can I say to you this morning, I don't know if you know, I'm going to say something that might shock you, and I don't know if you know this. You know in America we're living in what they call the post-Christian era? You know what that even means? You know, what, you, know, you know what a pregame show is, don't you? A ball game, what's a pregame show? Before. Comes before the game. Then you have what? The game. Then at the end of the game, you have a post-game show that recaps and talks about we today in America are living in post-Christianity in America. We're not living the way we lived even 50 years ago. We're living with our values, our morals, our compass has got turned upside down. And we're not living the way the Bible says. And we're on a collision course for the judgment of God. I don't know about you this morning. I want to be a John Harper. Remember John Harper? America's going down. America's like the Titanic major. She's going down. America's not, listen, you can't save America. You got to save the people in America. That's what you got to say. People, I'm going to save America. You get wrapped up in all the political hogwash and all that jargon, and then you get mad. I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell you what we ought to do. We ought to vote every one of them out. 
Democrats, Republicans, liars, thieves, connivers, crooks, everything that you can imagine up there and tell us all this stuff, lie after lie after lie after lie. I don't know how many times a day, how many times a week I get a notification on my phone, on my watch, it beeps in, so-and-so just died with a heart attack, so-and-so just got blood clots in them, so-and-so just fell over dead. You know why? Because of all those lies that the government told. All those vaccines and jabs. God bless your heart. I'm going to say again this morning. I'll just take time out right here this morning. And if you've had the jab and all this boosters, you ought to stand up and take you two or three laps around the church and thank God you haven't died yet. Amen. I'll tell you what the government wants. They want to kill you off. You say, why are we living like Because we're in post-Christian era. We're in the post in. We're nearing the rapture of the church. Amen. Where the beliefs that we held as a child and my mom and dad held, and your mom and dad held, and your grandpa and grandma held. Listen, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going I'm to say it again. Listen, if you, if you can go back very far, everybody used to preach out of this one right here. Everybody, give me an amen on that. Everybody used to read out of that one right there. This one's been around for 400 years. Every great revival in the world happened with this version right here. And all of a sudden, we need a new version. Amen. And Christianity's gone. We're seeing it everywhere. Instead of rising up and being men and women who contend for the faith, we're caving in. I saw where, I heard about one of the football players. I, I don't know if he played for the Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys. When he made some real kind of offhanded remark about Brittany Griner coming home. and said, what the, he was upset about it and then woke Ism got on him, and everybody began to criticize him, and he come out with a great big long statement of how he was wrong and he was sorry and he didn't mean to offend anybody with well, foot on that. You heard that? I'm getting sick and tired of the president all the way down to the preacher and make a statement, and then somebody criticizes. I don't agree with this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, I don't care if it offends you. I don't care if you get upset. I don't care if you hit that door and never come back. The truth is the truth and the word of God to stand. Amen. And Satan has invaded and infiltrated us and imitated us to the point to where you can't only tell Christianity from a bar room. Smoke and mirrors and all this stuff and dancing around on the stage and, and, and women in low-cut dresses and, and, and men in little tight skinny jeans and t-shirts up there with holes in their jeans. God help us today. Preaching ladies, I told you, hold on, put your seatbelt on. They're from Tennessee. They, 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 they can stand it. Hey, listen. It seems like today we're customizing what we believe. We, we want to customize what we believe and the traditions that we've held. For many, the fundamentals are not the fundamentals anymore. I want to say, thank God I'm a fundamentalist. I believe in the fundamentals of the Bible. I believe the Bible is the divinely inspired, inerrant, infallible, indivisible, indestructible word of God. I believe every word of is it is the word of God. I believe what the Bible says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. But yet we've got people today they want to hold on and say, they want to hold on and say, I'm a Christian, but they don't want to stand up for Jesus. They don't want to use this Bible as their final authority. Well, this is not your authority, what is? Your philosophy, your craziness, something you've dug out of the trash somewhere. Well, I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. As Christians, we're supposed to transform, transform the culture around us. Amen. I wish I'd have brought my two heroes this morning and set them up here. I, should, I just had a picture in my mind of them. I wish I'd have brought them. Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. I wish I'd have brought them and set them back up here this morning. When the culture tells you that there's something wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, and there's something wrong with Dr. Seuss, and there's something wrong with Pepe Le Pew, and there's something wrong with all those cartoon characters that we grew up with, but yet they can let these girls and these women, these men get up and use every... But Dennis and I were on the lake fishing the other day. And I didn't want to say anything, because I can't hear good anyhow. And Dennis said, you hear that, Pastor? 
I said, I sure do. I said, I think that's what, is that what I think it is? He said, it sure is. Somebody, I don't know how, you know, water on the lake travels. Be careful what you say on the lake because the pastor may hear you. <laughs> and somebody had that rap music turned up. F this and F that and F this. Playing that uh, out on the lake. God help us. Amen. Put up with that stuff. I said, man, I can't believe that. He said, well, well, you know, I do Christian rap. But uh, listen, I do Christian rock. Listen, what you say? Do you do Christian cocaine? You're a Christian adulterer. You're a Christian prostitute. And you're a Christian stripper. We put the name Christian on everything. And think that makes it right. That doesn't make it right. Amen. Well, it's Christian rap. That's no, hey, listen, that's trash is what that is. Amen. In a day when men are confused about biblical absolutes, Bible fundamentals, salvation by grace alone, the inspiration of scriptures, the virgin birth, gender identity, trans, hey listen, this transgenderism, all this stuff, the role of government in America, socialism against capitalism, freedom versus fascism, all these things that people are confused about. I want to stand today. I'm about to get happy and tell you I'm glad. Listen, I'm glad I'm an old-time Holy Ghost, heaven said, old-time Christian that still believes the Bible is the Word of God. Amen. You say it might get you killed. Don't threaten me with heaven. Amen. Amen. Don't you threaten me with heaven. I got news for you, in case you've forgotten, we're going to all die. And I tell you what, when I die and I pillow my head on, the, on that thing and they lay me in a casket, if that's where they lay me, I want the major and Carla and these grandbabies to walk by. And Dennis, I want them to say, Daddy never caved in. Amen. Daddy never backed up. Amen. Daddy never bought into the wokeism. They'll say, hey, they can say daddy might have been a lot of things. Daddy might not have been rich. Daddy might not have been popular. Daddy might not have had very many people following. But I want to tell you, as long as they can say, hey, daddy stood for the Bible. Amen. And then while they're saying that, I'll already be in heaven. Amen. Where Jesus say, enter in. Enter in. My child, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. I want you to enter into the joys of the Lord. Man, I listen. You listen in a hundred. Listen, I'm talking to people. You ain't got a hundred years. Some of you be lucky to have a hundred minutes left. You talk about a hundred. I used to preach that in a hundred years from now. You'd be glad you live for Jesus. Most of you be glad if you get a hundred minutes in. Where you look, I don't know if you'll live to get out of the service. In fact, try not to die in here, will you? Heard this, I heard the story that time somebody died in the church in the middle of a service and they called 911 and said they come in and they got four or five people before they got the right one. <laughs> God help us if the 911 come in to get somebody dead this morning, that whole half of you out. I ought to have somebody waving a Bible or shouting amen saying, Preacher, I'm with you. Man, I'm standing with the Word of God. I'm going I'm to take my stand with Jesus. No matter what the world says, I'm going to live for Jesus. Amen. That shows how far we've slipped. I'll tell you what's lacking today in Salvation. I'm going to preach a sermon on this. Here's an upcoming preview. Kathy had that post on the other day, devotion about that, and I like that. I tell you what's lacking in old-time Christianity today is salvation, a real, genuine, biblical, heaven-sent salvation experience. Amen. And then when you get salvation, you need to surrender. Right. You need to surrender to the will of God, to the word of God, to the way of God, to the work of God, to the word of God, and then you need to get in service. You don't get saved and work to get saved because you got saved. You ought to want to do something for Jesus Christ. Amen. And then you ought to be willing to sacrifice. Right. You say, well, man, I've come out on Sunday morning. What do you want? I want you to come back on Sunday night. I want you to come back on Wednesday night. I want you to come back on Tuesday morning. I want you to turn on every time we've got a podcast. I want you to turn on every time we've got a message going out. You say, do you think it's that important? It's that important. Amen. We've got these little fellas here, my grandson, my granddaughter, and Jonathan sitting there. We got these babies right here this morning. All those babies over there practicing for this thing. It's that important. Amen. Yes. There are very many real men in the pulpit today. That's right. Amen. Amen. Listen, remember that quote? If the living knew what the dead knew, everybody would be a Christian. 
Can I say it again? If the living knew what the dead know, everybody would be a Christian. The problem is once you die, it's too late. Amen. It's too late. I tell you what we need. We need to, I'm going to get down to my sermon. I mean, hold on. I ain't got there yet. I'm trying. I'm working hard to get there, but I'm, not, I'm, I'm slowing down. Listen, we need a revival. I tell you what, we need a capital R, capital E, capital B, capital I, capital V, capital A, capital L. We need a revival. We need a revival of old time, old fashioned religion, Christianity in America. We need a revival of returning back to the Word of God. We need a revival that will confront, challenge, and change people in their tracks. That's what we need today. I just read a recent study, and I hate to read those studies because they get, make my blood pressure go up. It's like having a stress test. Recent study of evangelicals, if you want to consider yourself an evangelical, I consider myself a fundamentalist. Amen. Amen. I could tell you the difference if you don't know. Most everybody in Christianity today would, would claim to be saved, would call themselves an evangelical. A neo-evangelical, by the way. That means new, not like it was 100 years ago. 75% of them said people are basically good. Instead of what the Bible says about the nature of sin, that man is inherently evil. You know why we're not seeing people saved today? Because people don't realize they're lost. They're comfortable in their religion. They're, They're comfortable in their creed. They're comfortable in their church but they've never come face to face with the Lord Jesus and been saved. 61% of them said they no longer read the Bible on a daily basis. I won't ask you if you read the Bible every day, but I'm going to tell you, you need to read the Bible every day. You need a daily dose of vitamin B every day. Capital B-I-B-L-E. Amen. 52%, 52%, I'm, ta- I'm not talking about atheists and, and, and heathens, I'm talking about those who claim to be evangelical. 52% reject absolute moral truth. Situational ethics. Ladies, just so you know, I just came out of education. So I know you're sitting there thinking I'm a backwood hillbilly nut that doesn't know anything. I've got, I've got an education. <laughs> I just retired out of education as an administrator, just so you can put that on the back burner and hold on to that. So I know what I'm talking about. Moral relativism, secular humanism, situational ethics. Well, you can lie if it suits you. Or if you need to tell a, a, a little white lie. There's no such thing as a white lie. There's just lie and the truth, amen? Listen, it said 60% of mainline Protestants what they believe is in direct opposition and conflict to the Word of God. You say, what's happened, Pastor? They've customized what they believe. They've taken the Bible. Remember what I told you last week about what Thomas Jefferson did? How many remember? What Thomas Jefferson was a what? Well, he was the third president of the United States. I'm pulling education out now. Thomas Jefferson also did what? Wrote the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson was what in his religious beliefs? Started with a big D, big D. He was a deist. A deist is somebody that believed that God just created the world but then let go of it and it just runs on its own. A deist is somebody that does not believe in the virgin birth. A deist is somebody that does not believe in the miracles of the Bible. A deist is somebody that doesn't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. In fact, Thomas Jefferson wrote his own version of the New Testament. Wouldn't have been very thick, would it? been pretty narrow, wasn't it? When it had very many pages in it, when you tear all the Bible and the miraculous things out of the Bible. That's what Thomas Jefferson believed. And man, we got a lot of people that fall right into that, man. They, they, they don't believe, they don't believe in the virgin birth. They've just customized their beliefs around the Bible. That's why I'm going to continue to preach. Good thing Christmas is coming. If we, I, I might preach on it right up into the New Year's. Who knows? On the virgin birth. I don't think it's anything that gets old. Amen. I'm not going. Listen, I'm not going to give them. I'm not going. Hey, listen, I'm not going to give the liberals and the modernists another toehold. I'm not going to give them another inch. Daddy used to say, "Boy, I gave you an inch and you took a mile." mile. And boy, he was right. Sometimes it'd be two miles. 
and sometimes be so far he couldn't see me. But I tell you what he'd do, he'd, he'd whip that belt out of there, and son, he'd tan my rear end and beat me around the, the, the head, neck, and the ears with that thing or whatever. And he'd say, you're going to listen to me, and you're going to do what's right. And you know what I said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call human services on you. <laughs> God, help me. I wouldn't have been here if I'd have said that. <laughs> Daddy would have backhanded me. No, he wouldn't have backhanded me. No, he'd have tucked his fist. And he'd have beat the tar out of me. And then he'd have packed my bags and called and said, come and get him. Yeah. Haul him off somewhere. I can't do anything with him. There used to be a time, there used to be, hey, there used to be a time when daddies could control their kids. Right. Amen. Amen. We've taken discipline out. We've taken discipline out. I'm not a, listen, I don't, I don't advocate beating a child. Don't misunderstand me. Amen. But I do believe discipline works. Yeah. Ask the Marines if discipline works. Ask the military if discipline works. Ask a ball team that wins if discipline works. Ask them down at the beer garden if discipline works. Why have we gotten into the home and schools and church and we said, well, we don't need any discipline? Wow, we're in a mess. Well, point number one, you ready? Hold on, we only got six points. These ladies are going back to Tennessee, so I've got to get the whole load dumped on them today. I don't want to go away and think he didn't get a real sermon. <laughs> Point number one, why I believe in the virgin birth. Number one, the testimony of the scriptures. Yeah. Wow. If what I hold in my hand <coughs> is not the word of God, we're in a mess. The Bible says in Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 23, it was repeated to the Virgin Mary, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Luke 1, 27, the angel came down and told Mary uh, to, to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, and the virgin's name was Mary. I tell you why I believe in the virgin birth, because this Bible says there was a virgin birth. Amen. No wonder the modernists and the liberals are rewriting it. No wonder they're taking virgin out. I'm going to stick with the one that says virgin. Amen? Amen. I like what Romans 1, Paul said in Romans 1, verse number 2, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. I believe in the virgin birth because the Bible says it to be true. Amen. You say, you believe that you have that much confidence in the Bible? Absolutely. Yeah. I was just reading again, was it last night? You know what the Old Testament, you know what the name they call God in the Old Testament? Anybody, somebody throw it out. Yahweh. Yahweh. You know what they say that when they were writing the Old Testament, the scribes would be writing it down that they would not even write, they left the vowels out so that you couldn't pronounce. They thought the name of God was so holy and so sacred that they didn't even want your mind to even get that picture and they just put the consonants in. When they were rewriting, they'd take their pen and get a new pen and write. And when they got done, they'd get another pen and start writing again. Why? Because it was sacred. Amen. The name of God. God said, listen, don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Tell that to the movie industry today. Amen. Tell that to the music industry today. Tell that to the sports heroes today. Tell that to everybody that's got to get up on TV and in front of a camera and take God's name and run it down the tubes. And I'll tell you what Jesus said, what God said about Jesus, that I've given him a name which is above every name. Amen. That it's the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen. But I tell, you what, I tell you what it said in the book of Psalms. David said, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name as high and holy as the name of God is. God puts this Bible, his word, his precious word above his name. Amen. Peter said in, when he was writing over in the book of Peter, he said, for we have a more sure word of prophecy 
He said, man, listen, I was there. I was with him. I watched him come on the scene. I watched the miracles that he did. I was there on the Mount of Transfiguration. But he said, we have a more sure word of prophecy than what we saw with our very eyes. It is the word of God. Amen. You can't get too much of the word of God. Amen. Number two, I believe in the virgin birth because of the testimony of God himself. Matthew 3.17 says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Matthew 17.5, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Yeah. i tell you what God said about Jesus. He said, He is the Son of God. Yeah. And to be the Son of God, you had to be virgin born. You couldn't be born like you and I. You couldn't be born with a contamination of the seed of man, with blood that had been defiled from the Garden of Eden from the time of sin. It had to come from God in heaven. Amen. And I tell you what, if the Word of God says it and God says it, that ought to, be, that ought to settle it for everybody. Amen. Then I believe in the virgin birth because of the testimony of the angel Gabriel. When, age, when old Gabe came to Mary and told her that she would bring forth a child and she, would be, she was the virgin. And when he appeared to Joseph in the dream, she was a virgin because that which had been placed in her had been placed there by the Holy Ghost of God. I believe in the virgin birth because of the testimony of the angels. I believe in the virgin birth because of the testimony of Mary herself Amen. when the angel came to Mary and said you want to be the mother of God God's going to come down and be placed in your womb and you know what she said how shall this be saying I know not a man that biblical word for know there's got the sexual connotation she had never been with mankind. She said, how can this be? The angel said, well, you don't have to worry about that. Fear not. Don't worry about that. The Holy Ghost will overshadow thee, and the power of the highest shall come upon thee. Yeah. And that holy thing which shall be placed in you shall be called the Son of God. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. I believe in the virgin birth because of the testimony of Joseph. Joseph was a spouse to Mary. Before they came together, she was found with child. Any other time before that, any other time since that would be called adultery. Right. Joseph didn't understand it. And while he pondered on those things, God appeared to him in a dream and sent an angel to him and said, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. And you know what Joseph did? Joseph got up from the dream. He got up and he took Mary as his wife. And the Bible says, And knew her not until after the birth of Jesus. Here's a man who got married to a woman and refused and refrained from sexual relations until after the birth of Jesus. I think those, I think those are pretty good testimonies. Amen? Amen. I'm going to give you one more and I'm going to close, so hang on. We've got the testimony of the silence of Mary at the crucifixion. When they took Jesus to crucify him. Do you know what they were crucifying him for? What was the one charge they had against him? That he made himself, that he was the son of God. How many people have ever had a child? Raise your hand up. By the way, who was the only person at the birth and at the crucifixion? Mary, his mother. And I tell you what they did to Jesus. They said, we're going to crucify you. You've made yourself the son of God. And they took him. And they spit on him. And they slapped him. And they beat him. And they mocked him. And they took a cat of nine tails and beat him with 39 stripes until they opened his back up and it looked like raw hamburger meat. And i tell you who stood there and watched it. Mary. She could have stopped it. She could have stopped it. 
All she had to do is say, hey, I wasn't a virgin. That, that, that's not the way he was born. What would you do if you're standing watching your child, your son or your daughter getting in the living daylights, getting life beat out of them? And she stood there. No wonder it was prophesied way back yonder in the Christmas story. But man, listen, sorrow is going to pierce your heart. And as she stood there, look at the major. He's big enough to eat hay. But he's still my boy. And listen, I do what I could to protect him. I give my life for his. Somebody come in and say, I'm going to kill you, Major. I said, my life is about, take me instead. You know what Mary did? You know what Mary did when she stood there at the crucifixion? Here's a thought. When sounds could have saved the Savior, but silence saved the sinners. Amen. So how do you know the virgin birth is real? Would you let your child go through that? For a falsehood, for a lie? You let your child be nailed to the cross after they took him and beat him and laid him down and nailed him to the cross. She stood there and watched that. All she had to say. All she had to say. It's not true. It's not true. I wasn't a virgin. But you know what she did? She held her peace. Why did she hold her peace? Tell your liberal friends and your modernists this. Why did, they, why did she hold her peace? Because it was the truth. What did the Roman soldier say after, after he, had, he had sat there and witnessed all that? And Jesus bowed his head and died and gave up the ghost. The Roman soldier says, surely this was the Son of God. Amen. Mary could have spoken a word, a word, and said, stop. I've seen enough. I've heard enough. I've witnessed enough. He's not virgin born. But Mary said absolutely nothing. I'm going to tell you something. You come in and start beating on the major, I'm going to start beating on you. He's my boy. You come in, you want to start beating up on the major, I'm going to start beating up on you. You say, you're an old man, I'll get me a club. I get something out of my pocket that's called the great equalizer. I'm not going to let you come and just beat up on my son. But Mary, Mary, the mother of God, knew the truth, knew it was so knew he was born from her virgin womb. And silence. I wonder if she had to turn away. I wonder if she had to look away. So I can't look. I can't watch what you're doing to my son. But yet, she said, And if she had spoken that day, you and I today would be in our sins and die and go to eternity in hell because we would have no Savior. I'm going to close here just in a minute. About three more hours, I'm going to close. <laughs> You're like this. As old, old uh, what was her name? Elizabeth said, about her seventh husband, I won't keep you much longer. <laughs> hey, I'm going to let you go in a minute. But I'm going to tell you something. You say, Pastor, why are you so worked up about the virgin birth? Because of the testimony that I gave you. 
and the silence of his own mother. I like that title. That might be another big title. When sounds could have saved the Savior, silence saved the sinners. I'm here today. I'm saved today. I'm a child of God today. I'm a preacher today. Because Mary stood and said not one word. The power of a silent testimony of an unspoken word from the lips of his own mother when she said, I wonder if people looked at her. I wonder if they were beating him with that cat of nine tails and his back was gushing and bones and, and meat and stuff just falling out. I wonder if people were looking at her. I wonder if some of those religious leaders, were, every time they took a swipe at him, if they looked over at Mary and said, Now, what about it? She said, He's the Son of God. That's all. But her silence said, He is the Son of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. How many people this morning can be honest? And I'm not going to come to you. I wouldn't embarrass you. I'd embarrass you some, but I wouldn't embarrass you at this point in the service. How many people would be honest and slip their hand up, and by that they can be saying, yes, I know I'm saved today. I'm, I'm on my way to heaven. Can you raise your hand big and high? Raise it up. If you know you've been saved and on your way to heaven, God bless you. Maybe you're here this morning and you couldn't raise your hand up, but you realize, man, I need to be saved I need a Savior. You have a courage to slip your hand up and down. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. But by that, you'd be given testimony that, yes, I need Jesus as my Savior. Anybody? Anybody here this morning may not be where they ought to be. Maybe they've been saved. Maybe they're not where they ought to be. And maybe you need to get a, another touch from God this morning. You need to get refired up this morning. You need revival this morning. Everybody say, yep, that's me, Pastor. That's me. I need that in my heart. Well, God bless you this morning. If you're here this morning, you've never been saved. You want to be saved? Pray a prayer something like this. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. And I know I can't save myself. But today, the best I know how, I'm asking Jesus to come into my heart and save me. You said that. Welcome to the family of God. Come up and shake hands. Let me pray with you. Put it on the Facebook screen. Man, we've had a lot of people saved and rededicated over the last two years. Thank God for Facebook ministry. Let's stand, Miss Jean. You need to come and pray. Maybe you're here. Maybe you need to come and pray this morning. Maybe you need to be a better testimony. Maybe you need to be a better witness. Maybe you got family that's going to die and go to hell if they don't get saved. Maybe you need to come and bump an old-fashioned altar today. How about it? How about it? You need to come this morning. Never been saved. Need to rededicate. Maybe you just need to come and pray. Let the altar alter you.
been a great place to be, amen? What a sermon, what a sermon. Great to see everybody out. Have a great crowd this morning. Great to have our visitors with us. Nice to meet you all. Hope to see you guys again. And, uh, man, these kids over here, they're practicing. They're, they're doing good. They got costumes. It's going to be real nice. So please, please make it out next uh, Sunday morning uh, for the children's Christmas special. Invite someone to come out. It's going to be a great time. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And hope to see everybody back here tonight at 6 o'clock. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with thankful hearts, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this service that we've had and the singing, dear Lord. And thank you for the, the sermon, the word of God that we've heard preached, dear Lord. Pray that you help anybody that's, that's here or anybody that's online listening that doesn't know you or that's away from you, dear Lord. Pray that uh, today would be the day of salvation. Ask for Holy Spirit conviction to come down, dear Lord, to convict them and convince them of their need for you and for a Savior, dear Lord, before it's everlasting too late. Lord, pray as we go through this season, dear Lord. Help us to remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Season. Lord, get us all back home safely today, Lord, and bring us back out tonight for the uh, for the message. Pray for Dad tonight and for the for the singing, dear Lord, tonight as we um, come out again, dear Lord, to open Your Word. Lord, we just thank You for this church. Thank You for everybody here, dear Lord, and I pray that You continue to bless us. Nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that Your will be done. In the sweet, holy, precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 